with the Titans design, I do see a couple of things that we can do to optimize it for uh, puffy foam. And uh, with puffy foam, there are you know certain techniques that we want to cover, uh, including the um, the density of the stitches in order to cut the foam, as well as the stitch flow, um, so you don't have stitching going over itself, um, along with travel stitches and whatnot. Um, and looking at it, uh, I do see that there are quite a few things that are very useful here um, on, and, and a couple things that we do need to improve. Um, first of all, you know, in doing puffy foam, you definitely want the outline to stitch first. And I see that you, we already have that here, um, but there are a couple of things that I, I see that need to be changed um, more along the lines of stitching angles and things like that. Um, so what I'm going to do is, you know, we already zoomed in on here. I'm also going to go ahead and choose from number 8 all the way down to 27. So I left clicked on number 8, le hold my shift key, left click on 27, and click the eyeball at the top here. I'm going to turn those invisible first. And the reason I want to do that is because, um, you know, we have these... Um, outlines with crazy some, with some crazy stitch angles. So what I'd like to do first with this design is actually fix that. So I'm going to scroll back up so I can see each letter uh, or each piece of it and I can see the first one that I need to improve is this eye here. So I'm going to left click on the left hand side on number three and we'll go ahead and zoom in here and um, go to the outline view which is right here, view outline. And we're gonna go ahead and click on edit mode. The edit mode, um, I see the um, nodes that I can edit. And um, this also kind of helps me see how the stitches are being read um, because of the points that are made in the edit outline mode. I'm gonna right click off to the side to deselect. And um, when I have points like this, um, because the stitches are going 90 degrees to the direction of the line, um, you may get some kind of crazy outlines. So I'm just going to kind of pull it down and kind of square it off a little bit. And when I regenerate my stitches, you'll see how that kind of helps. Um, again, I'll go back to the edit outline mode. So outline view, edit outline mode. I can also take these angles here, kind of make it more squared. Whereas I put my cursor, I left clicked on the node and then I put my cursor over the green arrow here um, and I can actually change the angle of the line that comes out from that node. And I'm kind of making it straight across and I'll go ahead and hit go again. And now you can see it's a little bit more boxed off. So what I'd like to do here is kind of go through each outline and just make sure that things look nice. Um, I'm going to kind of pull these nodes in. Um, this one right here, it's a little bit curved, so I'm going to pull that down. Take this node, right click, delete that point. Kind of square things off. And, you know, this is, um, knowing this is kind of uh, coming from you know, playing with the with the software and understanding how the software works, so you can see it squares it off a little bit more. So you know, we'll do, we'll go through. Um, I'll go through these um, in this whole design, but uh, I do want to show you that this can be changed and um, manipulated to where it is going to stitch a little bit nicer. So in outline view, right clicked on it go to the um, edit mode and I just left click there to add a node. I'm going to right click hold and drag. I'm going to take this node, kind of bring it up, kind of like the same thing with that eye. Change the angles here and then when I generate uh, we can see it looks a little bit nicer. So again I'd go through here, change things around so that the uh, stitching you know, looks much nicer. I might pull this out a little bit. You know, you don't want to go too far off um, the 
the actual outline, you know, because you do have stitching that needs to line up with it. So we're going to go here. I'm going to pull this down, generate my stitches, and you can see I'm still having kind of a problem here. So again, I'm going to go back in and kind of play with play with that a little bit. And again, it could be moving the nodes, it could be moving the angles. Let's go ahead and generate. And we see that we we improved quite a bit here. Um, the next thing that I see, and we'll go ahead and make that visible, is I'll left click on the T here. Hold my shift, shift key, left click on the S, um, and turn that back visible. Um, what's nice about this is that, um, you know, this is going to be really helpful cutting the foam. So um, after the uh, after the border goes down, you'll want to stop the machine um, and then put your foam down. And then what you can use this for. Um, what, what's really nice with this is that you can actually use it uh, to help cut it, help cut the foam a, a bit. So um, with these line stitches, if I go ahead and look at my needle penetrations here, you can see my needle penetrations are a little bit, you know, in some areas they're nice and close, in other areas they're a little bit farther from each other. So what I'm going to do here is um, left click on number 8, hold my shift key, left click on number 15 so it selects everything. I'm going to zoom out and zoom this whole area. And then I am going to go to my property settings, left click on that. I'd like to bring that basic step down so I have more needle penetrations. And that will help with cutting the foam, especially on those capped areas. Um, right now, with what is selected, it's 918 stitches. I'm going to change this basic step to one, which would be one millimeter. And then I'm also going to go up to the line tab, left click on that, and change the maximum step to one so that I won't have any stitches larger than one millimeter. Let me go ahead and apply that. When I apply that, down at the bottom here, you can see I've got about a thousand stitches more. So I got 1944. I'll go ahead and press OK. And now you can see that my stitches are actually closer to one another. And that'll help with cutting the foam in addition to the density settings uh, that are that we're going to change in the green areas. Now, as a side note, you have a color change and a stop. And that basically turns into two color changes. Um, because a stop in a DST is actually transferred to a color change. So let's go ahead and take that stop out of there and we've got a color change because um, really you only need one color change for this to have the machine stop. I'm going to left click on 16, hold my shift key, go down to 19 and turn on my areas. Um, with these areas, you know what, we'll kind of come back to them um, as we talk about stitch angle and um, density settings because um, these areas will actually follow what we need to do in here. So let's turn everything else visible. I'll left click on 20, left click on 27, deselect the eyeball, and now you can see um, the, the uh, green. I'm actually going to turn everything else invisible. So I left clicked on that last orange, hold my shift key, left click on the uh, first one, and then turn that invisible. So really we're just looking at the um, the stitching of the Titans. So if we scroll down, um, what you did here was great in in uh, separating the T. We've got the um, bottom part of the T and then the cross. And what we want to do with that, first of all, is that with the with the area, you can see that it's got travel stitches, and it's because my in and out points are at similar spots. So when it starts here, it's got to travel down here, do the satin stitch to eventually get to that out point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the in point, left click, hold and drag, move it down to the bottom and have the out point move to the top here. 
and we'll go ahead and generate the stitches. When you do that, now you can see you've got no um, travel stitches and that's not going to go on the foam. So that won't mat it down. The second thing we want to do is make sure that we have at least double the density. Now, doubling the density actually means going down in number. Um, right here we have 0.81, which the normal density is 0.4. Um, but because density works a little bit opposite than what we think, um, the density is the spacing between the rows of stitching. So our, the higher the number, the more space, the lower the number, the less space. So with the default at 0.4, I usually like to take my density to like 0.16 or 0.18 millimeters um, for puffy foam. So let's just go ahead and put 0.16. I'll hit enter it'll recalculate automatically and you'll see here you've got way more stitching. You can see you have way more needle penetrations here. Um, so after changing it down here, uh, I can also change it up in my property settings. And what's kind of neat about this is that when I go to my property settings, um, I can check the other settings as well, but I can also save the settings to something that I want to use for puffy foam and then apply it to everything else rather than having to constantly go in and, and change things around. The only thing that we would need to do um, besides applying all these settings to each letter is also um, changing the in and out points if necessary. So what I'm going to do is first of all we have um, the tie stitch which we want selected. I'm looking in the the options underneath here. The underlay. Um, with the underlay, the only underlay I would use if you didn't already have the uh, that blue stitching is, if I click on use underlay and click edit, I would actually go from zigzag, bring that over, and use an edge underlay. So what was selected was zigzag um, and I push that back over to available and then I took edge, double clicked on it and brought it over to selected mode. Now with the edge underlay it also changed some settings um, where I put my maximum step at a smaller step length, maybe like a two, so it's a shorter stitch length. And my margin, that's how far inside that um, that edge underlay is going to lay inside the blue and white flashing line. So let's take that down to maybe a, a point two. Um, the next thing is the pull compensation. In the pull compensation, depending upon the letter, I might increase it a little bit. Um, I might decrease it, a, or actually I don't usually decrease it, but I might increase it a little bit. But because you have a border on here, um, we don't want to increase it too much. Let's maybe put it at a 0.45. And then I'm going to go to satin. And with my satin stitch, there are a couple things that I do want to change here. One is deselecting the auto stitch shortening and deselecting the breaking long stitch. That way you wouldn't have to change my maximum stitch. I can still keep my maximum stitch at whatever length, but breaking the long stitch allows the program to do long stitches um, you know, with it deselected. Uh, the density is already in here, you can see that. Um, but let's go ahead and apply that. When I apply that, you're going to see, I'll pull this aside, there's my edge underlay that will help lay down or help cut the um, the puffy foam in addition to the stitches on the side here. So let's go back to the underlay. I could even bring that down to, let's, let's even go down to a 0.8. I'll apply that. You'll see the stitches get closer to each other. So that'll be helpful in cutting, especially down here where I don't have really any needle penetrations, um, you know, if we didn't do any caps. So I like this setting. Let's go ahead and save it. And I it'll save into my properties. And I'll just call this uh, Puffy Foam. I'll hit save. And when I hit save, I'll hit OK. I'll hit go. And now those settings are set in there. Now I'm going to take the rest of these areas. I'm going to left click on 21. Hold my shift key. Left click on 27. And sometimes I would change the in and out points before I apply these settings because I can see them quite nicely in here, you know, with the open density. But this time around, let's go to our property settings. We will go and hit load. We're going to find that puffy or puff foam um, setting. Oh, maybe I did not save it. 
let's go back, cancel that out, let's go back here, and we'll go ahead and save. Oh, there's Puffy Foam, sorry, that was at the beginning, I just didn't see it. So we'll back up here, again, select all those areas, go to Load, there's Puffy Foam, hit Open. Now I must hit Apply before I hit OK. So it applies that setting and then hit OK. So now my setting is correct. The other things that we need to check are going to be stitch angle and in and out points. So we're going to go to the top here. I see that I've got kind of a crazy stitch angle right here. Left click on that. Um, that is my stitch or my view angle. And I'm going to right click to deselect my zoom in tool. Right click here. And then I'm going to use the handlebars here to go ahead and move my angle the way I would want it to be. And imagine this as your satin stitch going that length. So you want your angles to go in the same direction as a satin stitch. I'll go ahead and hit go and you're going to see that improve. Now some cool things about what you, you know, without having to do caps with the puffy foam is that I can actually go into the view angle here and maybe do this more at an angle at the corner so I can get more of a, a better cut down here um, and then kind of now oh, it'll be at a little bit of an angle but you'll see that as I go from side to side as I'm moving these, that's just with the left cl click, hold, and drag. Uh, I can kind of create that cut without having to do much with the capping. I'll hit go here, and you can see now this this is the area that does not really have any cap or any stitching um, in this area right here. Whereas before, and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and hit the undo button. we didn't have really any stitching here that would cut the the uh, the puffy foam but that's where your caps come into play so let's go back and go to the stitch angle we'll go in and change my angles and I don't have to be so so extreme but um, you know as far as the transition goes um, I don't have to be you know, I don't have to have those stitches kind of laying on its side, per se. Um, but I do want to get as close as I can to that corner. Um, and I'll show you the difference from one corner to another. You can see I'm really on that edge there, right here on the corner, whereas I'm not over here. So let's go ahead and hit go. We'll kind of see the difference. You see I have closer stitches over here where I don't over here. Um, it actually put in an angle for me. And we get a, that angle with those two points closer to one another. And if you have to, go ahead and zoom in there. And you can see it gets a, better, a little bit better coverage. The other thing is that I want my end point to be on one end, my out point to be on another end. Let's go ahead and generate the stitches. And that looks great. Um, right click off to the side. Also, um, you know, I have a trim between this section, the section, the long section, and the cross section. I do have a trim in there um, because I really don't want any traveling stitches. Let's move on to the next area. We'll right click here, change my end point down here, my out point up here. Let's go ahead and generate those stitches. No travel stitches now. Then maybe we'll go to the view angle and we'll go ahead and check these angles here and see how that, you know, if we move them down closer to one another, the two endpoints there, um, kind of see how that works out. The eye looks pretty good, although my out point, I need to be here. If I go to my angles, I'd like to change my angle here. So it'll kind of go to the tip, to the edge, um, all the way with stitch points. So, you know, with those settings, that's kind of what is, um, you know, desired in here. Um, with the T here, it is all one piece, so I may want to go in, go to my um, view outline, 
right click and go down to divide with line. I already have that area selected with a right click. So I'm going to start outside and end outside with two left clicks, hit enter. Oh, didn't quite make it. Enter. And enter. Now what I might want to go in and do is go to my edit outline mode, right click, delete some points, make this nice and straight all the way across. Right click on this area. I'm going to kind of pull it up over just a little bit in here and kind of clean up these points here. Right click, delete, right click, delete right click hold and drag on a uh, red line and it will actually allow you to do a curve or an arc in a sense or a smooth right click hold and drag I've got a bunch of little points up here so I'm just gonna right click delete point and I just left click on delete point to actually do that so let's right click off to the side we'll generate our stitches perfect uh, so now we got three sections of the T Let's go ahead and um, we can see that it does the top part of the T first. So I'm going to do my end point up here, my out point down here, at opposite ends. We'll go to the stitch angle. I'm just going to try and get it to where, um, you know, I've got nice points right next to each other. I'll right click on this section, which should actually go next because I want that cross to. Um, go afterwards and finish that off. So I'm going to actually take number 25, left click on it, left click hold and drag, down underneath 25, or you know what was 26. So if I go to 25, I'm going to hit uh, Z on my keyboard, that's zoom selected object. I've got my in point at the top, my out point at the bottom, which looks great. Go ahead and generate my stitches. We'll go ahead and scroll up. I will go ahead and take the right click on this area, change my in and out point, go ahead and generate the stitches, looks good there. So let's go ahead and hit Z on the keyboard, it'll zoom in on that selected area. I might want to go in and change my angle right here so I don't need those caps kind of thing. Um, so in following these kind of rules, um, what I want to do is, you know, go to my in point and out points, change those, and just make sure I don't have any really cr areas that are crossing each other. Um, so the in point of the A kind of starts over here, loops around, comes down with the hook. The N, um, because it is all one piece, what I'm going to do is, um, and I can tell it's all one piece because number one, it selects it all when I right click on it, but also on my um, stitch sequence viewer, I do have um, the end as one piece and not broken apart. So I'm going to go into the edit um, or the um, outline view and then go down to divide with a line and go from one end to the another, all the way across, enter, press escape to get out of the tool. Right click off to the side, then I'm going to right click, edit outline mode, just in case I need to, you know, change any areas. Go up to that other section. I'm going to kind of go ahead and cross over into here. And let's go ahead, right click off to the side, generate my stitches. I want this piece to go first, so I can see here, I'm just going to left click, hold, and drag, bring it above 28. Let's go ahead and hit Z on my keyboard. And I'm actually going to have the in point, or I'm sorry, the out point here and the in point here. I also want to check out my stitch angles. I'm going to change the stitch angles. And if I'd like to add one, I can right click inside that area, add the stitch direction guideline. There we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change that guy right there. And I'm just left clicking, holding, and dragging. Generate that. Then I will go here. I also want to make sure that there's trims in between. Um, so I just input those trims. I will go down to the bottom here, make my in point, change my out point, 
go ahead and hit go. And you can see those changes. Uh, so same with the S. I'm just going to take the out point and bring it on the other side and hit go. Okay, so we've got those optimized for that. Now let's talk about those caps. So let's go ahead and turn those areas visible. And what we have with the caps, um, let's go ahead and find those right here, um, are following the correct idea of doing it underneath areas where you don't really have stitch penetration points. But the thing is, is that you do want kind of the same um, settings as you would uh, with a little bit of a change, um, the same settings as Puffy Foam, you need, still need to cut it. So we are going to go up here to our settings. Let's go ahead and load the Puffy Foam settings. I'll go ahead and open and then apply. But things that I want to change is one, I don't really need an underlay there because it's such a small section. So let's apply that. Number two, I don't need as much pull compensation. You know what, I lied earlier. I do want to back off the pull compensation here. Um, so I'll bring it down to point two, apply there. And um, you do have the in and out points at opposite ends. I'm okay with that, so I'm just going to hit okay. And then go, um, making sure that those match. So for this section right here, let's find that up here. And I have the in and out points at opposite ends. Let's go to my settings. We will go ahead and hit load. I will go ahead and choose puffy foam, open, apply that. But again, I don't want to use the underlay. I want to go to the pull compensation tab and bring that down to about 0.2. I'll apply that and now let's hit save. Let's call this uh, puffy cap. save and okay. Now um, generate the stitches, go number to 17. I'll hit Z on my keyboard so I can see. I will then go to my stitches, our stitch properties, hit load, we'll go to puffy cap, hit open, apply it first. You can see that change and okay. So um, now the other thing is that I do want these areas uh, to fall inside of my object. I don't want it to fall outside um, because uh, for fear of, you know, the, the stitching sticking out. So, you know, that's kind of a, a thing as well. So let's go here, hit go, and, and now it's on the inside, you know, because you want your other stitches to cover it. So in following that, you know, the areas that do need the caps are like right here on the end of the S. You can see there's that, that one right there that you do have. Um, let's go ahead and hit Z to zoom in on it. Only thing with this is that I do have some different angles here. So let's straighten these out. Let's go ahead and generate. And also I need to go to the outline, edit outline mode, and pull that inside of my design. And if need be, if I need to do, you know, reshape it in a sense, go ahead and generate, then go to my stitch settings. I'll hit load. There's that setting, open, apply, and OK and generate my stitches. So now I've got that ca nice cap there. But I would make sure, you know, I can see that the stitching doesn't have the, the capped area or the extra stitches here that it needs for the app, or I'm sorry, the uh, puffy foam. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go back to the edit outline mode. Select that area. Let's go a little bit closer to the edge here. And while changing this, keep in mind that you may also need to change the angles. So we're going to go here. I'll go to my angle view. Uh, first of all, let's go ahead and generate our stitches. Let's go back to the angle view. Pull those stitches down. Or, I'm sorry, pull that angle down. 
look uh, go ahead and generate and now you can see that that's going to help um, put uh, needle penetrations especially very close needle penetrations inside that area before the the top area stitches let's go ahead and uh, turn under everything invisible an easy way I can do that is I left click on this um, arrow to the right select all invisible let's go ahead and turn it invisible and you can see that um, if we go to the 3d view things have changed quite a bit um, one other thing about this is that I may or you may want to um, increase the pull compensation on your outlines so it does stick a little bit further outside sometimes we really want to exaggerate that so let's go here and change that to 0 0.6 we'll go ahead and hit apply and it makes it a little bit thicker maybe even 0.75 apply that and it goes we'll hit OK and it goes a little bit thicker um, so let's go ahead and zoom out. Now we may also want to move things around. Um, notice that when I did move it, it did not move the caps. So you'll have to move those as well. Um, so those are kind of the, the things that I would change in here for sure. Um, you know, I think this can be applied to any design that you do um, with you know and then you you know might want to do some other changes um, just depending upon um, you know what the properties are of these designs so I hope this helps uh, if you do need anything else please let us know thank you